Welcome back. Today's going to be a little different. A wish list. I'm hoping that maybe Dream Tonics will see because I have no contact or affiliation with them. I think this is possibly the best way to make my voice heard in terms of ideas and suggestions. This is going to be part one. Hopefully I will get some comments for things that I may have missed for to do a part two. I'm going to be gentle at first and just do mainly GUI improvements. So let's begin. The first thing is the dancing transport control. And it does exactly the same thing regardless of where it is. But the annoying thing is it turns off when you're, when you're not using it or if you've clicked away at all and it just disappears you have to click on the screen to make it appear then you can hit play or usually it's one of the other buttons i need not play because i use the space bar but point is this is completely unnecessary it's not a i mean it's a blank space reserved for it so why does it turn on and off don't need it in both places either you know like right in the middle here would probably be the best place constant because muscle memory you know when you're working with something you just go back to the same place what we don't want is it to start jumping around because they've added new features here so like let's call it center is the center is the place my next wish or wishes is all to do with the coloring system now up until recently we haven't seen anything but green but the new pitch modes have brought in pink and then blue, which has now been changed to a little black triangle in the back corner. Um, not too keen on this. So we'll talk about that later. First up, this is a welcome addition, is colors, new colors for new tracks. Brilliant. But, <laughs> and there's always a but, 99% of the time, for me, for a lot of us, we'll be, you know, trying to do multi-layered vocal, which uses the same lyrics and a lot of the same melody. So we duplicate tracks. Oh, great. It's green again with the same name. First of all, vocal one should be followed by bracket D bracket, just to let us know it's a duplicate. Then second thing is we should be able to right click on the color swatch so we can change the colors. Because if I have this as the lead vocal and this as the backing vocal, they look identical. And if I select them in here, they look identical. I suppose we could copy and paste when creating a new track. Stick a voice on it. Paste. So that's great. Green, blue, fine. But still here still green everywhere every every voice and so if i move this to make a harmony and i can see the other lines they're green everything's green and that's all to do with the fact that these are sing mode or rap mode or manual and the reality is is we can only work on one voice at a time and whether it's sing, rap, manual, or other, shouting, screaming, they shouldn't be the priority here. The priority should be the colors lining up from what you expect to see. I expect to see blue here. I really, I can't think of it any other way. And green lines there. And if I mute these lines, these should disappear. Because the thing is, when you have umpteen tracks, if I have seven tracks, and they're all doing slightly different things. All these lines are just going to overlap each other and they're going to be completely useless. But if I solo one with my, with my main vocal track, so I've got, you know, five other tracks here, then I'm only going to see these two, which is really what you want. You want a bit of correlation between this and this. Cause let's face it, you don't do anything in here. This is literally a display and this has the most information right now. I can see at a glance that they're two different voices because of the coloring. That simple. Now, another thing I think we really need to, to address is this idea that solo is taking on, oh, and mute. Same colors for everything. 
as these. This, I think, is a mistake. I think all the solos should be red and all the mutes should be, uh, say, yellow or gold or something. Uh, that way, whenever you hit solo, you'll see at a corner of your eye, it's a green track and a little red S means it's soloed. My proposal is this, that we still use the sing, rap, and manual blue color that you used to have. But instead of making the whole piece that color, we take on the color from the track. And then we have, instead of this little thing in the corner, we take the whole front end here up to the word starts and put a color block in. And that way, if I'm on, a, I'm on say, okay, I'm going to switch now to Richie, who should be blue. I'll make it blue. There we go. And then we do this. Pink, 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 pink. And now we know at a glance that it's Richie singing because it's blue. That lines up. And the pink little notch on the front tells us that it's rapping. Even though you can hear it, it's rapping. But at a glance, it's useful to know because you may mix them up throughout your, you may have them singing a bit and rapping a bit. So it'd be a good little indicator to see blue bars everywhere for Richie and then little pink and green notches on the front to let us know when it's singing and rapping. And that, simple, straightforward. This next swish I feel would be very useful. It's, you know, not something that's been addressed at all yet, so this is all new. Let me delete these tracks. Okay, we're back to Solaria here. Starts on C, then to D. E and F. So that's basically C major or something similar. What if I put her to there? This is now, I think I'm in F minor scale. Now, wouldn't it be great to be able to have a scale indication of some sort so that when you are, if I decide to do a copy of this and transpose it up there, Obviously, this is not intelligently changing your notes to stay in F minor scale. So, a way to help that out would be to have an intelligent sort of uh, function in the background that does show us that. So, I propose that you have a selector. I'm going to pretend here. Bing, oh, there's a selector. And I'm going to tell it to be F minor. And when I select that, we get these little notches on the keys to show us the scale of F minor, which is already helping, right? I can see that these are in F minor. And if I was to duplicate the track and then move this one up a fourth, I could then use this to adjust these. But going one step further, how about these actually change to show us if we're on the scale or not. Okay, so if I was to get these now, and I'm going to just transpose them up, and we know they've gone out of the scale, and there you go. So if I decide to move this note around, every time it goes out of the scale, it turns gray, and when it comes back into the scale, it turns back to its original color. I don't want to say green because hopefully we'll We'll be over that hurdle. Another very basic wish list idea is contextual help when you hover over something. So if I just hover over the loop button here, I'll get a little tell me it's loop and then explains what it does. And, you know, that could be something that could be switched on and off. That's all my suggestions for the moment. My wish list, as it were. I do have more, but again, they're more advanced and they're bigger asks for the company. They may be working on it already. I don't know. So again, if you have some ideas that you, you know, would find really good time savers, feel free to jot them down in the comments and I'll add them to my list for the next wish list video. Until then, see you soon.